Let's do this. Let's walk through our entire weekend from start to finish, shall Let's we? Let's finish. Um. <laughs> Anyways, we're back from Coachella. <laughs> Miss Remy Ashton and her assless chaps was in vogue. <laughs> Please give me my phone. I'll pay you. I promise. But if you were wearing a flower crown, I might sit you down. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls. Ramble. Pretty basic. Thank you to Away for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hi guys, welcome back to Pretty, pretty basic. basic. We are here today. Straight we are out of pretty tired. <laughs> pretty hungover. Pretty we are here deranged. <laughs> pretty unhinged we're coming at you because we just got out of laser eye surgery mm -hmm. we um are in recovery and thought we would share our experience of getting lasik eye surgery together and if you're not watching the youtube video you probably are very confused uh that was slightly sarcastic on remy's behalf although i have considered should i get lasik uh, i've heard nothing but amazing things i'm kind of debating well if you are watching the youtube you get it. We are very obviously tired. We are in our hoodies. We even have our sunglasses on. And we're... That make it look like we got LASIK eye surgery. That made it but we like didn't. That. We didn't. But debating. I would get it, honestly. But I'm... Like, what's the one body part that you're freaked out by that gives you the heebie-jeebies? Not eyeballs. Oh, see, mine's eyeballs. Oh, even just thinking about it right now, I want to throw up. the name up. eyeballs. Oh. I like when you say it now, I'm imagining like an ophthalmologist like test, you know, when you like look into the little like machine and you see the little tree and you click the little button. Yeah, it's, it's a, no, it's a, mine's always a little barn. <laughs> yeah, it is a barn. It's a barn. It's a barn. Um, yeah. So I could never get LASIK eye surgery because the sheer thought of eyeballs makes me want to absolutely just end it all. But well, you have to be awake for that. Can they put you under? I don't think so. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Anyways, we're back from Coachella. We're back from Coachella 2022. It has been three years since the last one. You know what's so funny? People, like I've gotten so many comments leading up to Coachella on vlogs, on TikToks, on whatever, being like, oh my God, I wait, we waited two years for this content. And I was like, no. Yes. It's been three years, people. Right? Three very long years. Clearly some of us have been actually counting down the days versus other people. Uh, I think the two people that have have been sitting in this room. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I've been, there's so much that I want to talk about mm. because there's so much to debrief on from the whole weekend. We obviously went to Coachella together as we do. And uh, this is our third year going together. Yeah. Beautiful wow. situation. Um. I have to say that you and I have never had a tiff at a Coachella. No, we never have. Although there were rumors this year of people thinking that I we were know, fighting because we weren't with each other a lot the first day. But I'm like, that's how you know we secure AF because we literally, like, we were like, go do your thing. I'm going to go do my thing. We would always find each other. No you offense. I barely thought about you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Remy. Yeah. It wasn't until someone, someone came up to me and was like, are you guys okay? And I was like, huh? So my favorite thing was on day one, because I wasn't seeing you often, so many people were coming up, whether it was a friend or a fan or someone who just listens to Pretty Basic, whatever. And their their reaction was always, where's Remy? Like, where is she? My answer, I don't know. She's here somewhere. I don't know. I think she's like, and, but then at one point, my favorite part was I would go very drunkenly, right? <laughs> I would tell people. So Cal's a really big Carly Rae fan. So they went to go see Carly Rae Jepsen and I went to go see City Girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was also a one hour set from 5 to 6 p.m. So it could be like midnight. And you're like, she's at she's no, Carly Rae Jepsen. I, did. I remember it being she's dark. I was like, so Cal's a really big <laughs> I'm not kidding. I will say we definitely made up for the three years that we were gone. The way that my voice just cracked through the whole sentence. Yes, but I also will say, were you hungover much? No. Me either. Not at all. Me either. Which is such a blessing. Well, except for being tired, but not like, not really, not feeling sick the next morning. Mm -mm. Like, I felt like we did I it right. I felt so good that I could almost go back tomorrow. And guess what? We're we are. Back tomorrow. <laughs> we're insane. We're going back to weekend two. If you didn't know- there are two actual weekends of Coachella. Here's the difference, okay? We're veterans. We've been, I, my first Coachella was 2014. Yours was too, right? Uh, I think 15? 2015, yeah. We've been around the block. <laughs> Although this is the first year I felt a little old. 
I like feel I was so old. Like, so the difference between weekend one and weekend two, weekend one is essentially uh, a fashion show. It's when most of the press and, um, so, you know, top celebs go. It's the place Party, to be seen. Party, club, another, another bus, cl- another, another bus. bus, shot. Another club, yes. another bus, another party. There's so many parties. Here's the thing too. I don't think a lot of people know this. There's the festival. Yes. But now it's become such a huge phenomenon where a lot of people go just to go to parties outside of the festival. Like not everyone even goes to the music festival itself. There are so many parties. Like you literally can't even go to all of them because there are so many. Yeah. I have to say, I've been doing so much research after leaving Coachella, mostly on TikTok. And it's crazy to think that the last time there was a Coachella, TikTok didn't exist. I kept or thinking if it did, it was very small. It's no, pretty crazy, right? I don't think it even existed. It Was, was it musically still at the time? Probably. Well- Obviously, it's been cool to see like all the Coachella breakdowns and things on TikTok. And there have been so many people. There's two big talk- topics that, in which I've seen. Mm-hmm. One of which is people clowning on influencers for dressing up mm-hmm. in the way that we did to Coachella because uh, Kylie, Kendall, Haley Bieber, they were all there and they came wearing jeans and like t-shirts and blazers. And everyone's like, ha ha, which I think a lot of people just love to laugh at influencers, which yeah. I get it. We're, uh, yeah. we're, 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 we're laughable. But they were like, oh my God, the influencers probably feel so stupid. They look so stupid for like going all out when like all the celebrities are wearing not like pretty much like nothing special. But I honestly, my take on it is- Yeah, I wanna hear your thoughts. I think- um, Cause we haven't talked about this. Yet. I mean, I wore assless chaps. <laughs> <laughs> I wore fucking assless chaps and I couldn't have cared less. You, this is casual. I <laughs> this is my Friday look. I felt so, okay. We'll get into the assless chaps thing later, but basically like, I mean, I wore fucking assless chaps. I wore sequins. I wore like a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. Like I thought it was fun. I think Coachella, whether you are an influencer or a celebrity or neither of those and you go, I mean, it's a fun place to express yourself and wear what you want mm-hmm. and not be, ju- well, some people are judging, but I personally, <laughs> when I feel there, like when I'm there, I don't feel judgment at all. Mm-hmm. I just feel fun and I'm having a good time with my friends and I'm dressed up because it's a fun experience. I had so many thoughts about that too. One, I saw Lauren Geraldo make a TikTok. I saw James talk about it too, of everyone being like, People are saying I'm not giving them enough, but then they're also saying that influencers are dressing up too much for this shit. I got some people commenting, your looks weren't serving this year. And then I got some people commenting, oh my God, who dresses up anymore? Like it's so, it was so funny. But what blew my mind though, was I was like, I think a lot of the people making those comments really aren't thinking for themselves because if those celebrities did dress up, they'd be like, oh my God, yes, works. Like, so, like you know what I mean? But yeah. because they didn't this year, they're like, yeah, obviously it's not. It's just like following the pack thing versus like, yo, if you want to dress up, dress up. Like I, I honestly think our f- fucking friend group like looked so good. I think Cal looked the best. Obviously. Because I styled him myself. But I think everybody should wear whatever the fuck they want. I, I literally on day three, I wanted to wear the Cal cella shirt. I just didn't bring jeans with me. Otherwise I would have worn it. Oh, like TK and I wore it. <laughs> it was so, it's amazing. Like wear a t-shirt where if you want to wear assless chaps, if you want to literally wear a heat mat bodysuit or whatever he wore, yeah. wear the fuck you want. It's honestly- And rock it. Yes. Also, I had another kind of thought around the whole thing too. I think this year, a lot of people were personally scared to dress up much because it's been so long since the last Coachella. I think a lot of people were nervous, like especially, you know, post the past few years, like everyone's like style in general right now is so athleisure. It's so sweatpants. It's very chill, very laid back, even like thrifting. Like that wasn't as big three years ago. Like so much has changed since then. On top of that, people's ages has changed too. Like everyone's looking at these like A-list celebrities being like, oh, they didn't bring anything. But like, Kylie, when she was in her King Kylie era, like 2016, Kylie was so much younger. So she, of course she wanted to like express herself and do crazy shit. Like she has two kids now. Like she wasn't even there, was she? She was there. Oh, she was there. She wore a blazer. She Oh, she wore a blazer. <clears throat> but do you know what I mean? Like, I think so much has changed and a lot of people are comparing it as if it was last year's Coachella when it's like, yo, it's been so long. 
I don't, I don't know about you personally, but I also don't really care about trends. Even Ollie was walking around the house and being like, okay guys, I heard the trend for hair this year is like this and then wearing this kind of makeup and X, Y, Z. And I was like, I looked at him, I was like, I honestly really don't care. But I'm gonna see, wear what if, I think looks cute for yes, me. But if you were wearing a flower crown, I might sit you down. I understand that. <laughs> I think that is where we draw the line. <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously, if you wanna wear that flower crown, I would support you, bitch. I would be like, yes, girl, you look hot as fuck. But I would still be like, hey, just letting you know. No, that but- was- <laughs> But that's being a good friend. That's being a good friend. But also, like, I even saw a TikTok about me where it was like, um, Remy looked cute, but like, assless chaps are so 2019 because apparently, obviously, we know James wore them and like made them like the big. Did you see Sally Dar's sweater? So fucking good. <laughs> so good. It said JC's ass less. What was it? JC's ass less. Was that all it said? And then on the back, it was a butt. So I saw the girl was like, oh, she looks so cute, but like, Assless chaps are so 2019 for Coachella. And like, first of all, assless chaps are not just a Coachella thing, obviously. (laughs) And also not just for 2019, you can wear them whenever. Um, I was like very scared to wear them because I I literally had a breakdown too before, as you know, because I was like, people are gonna make fun of me and I'm scared. But the reason why I chose them was because the designer who made them literally made them for Tinashe a few years ago, where she performed in the exact same costume, but in like a cute light pink color. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it, I was like, I. I love that she looks amazing. I want to wear that. So that's what I like kind of copied it from. Mm-hmm. But people were like, oh, like it's so 2019. Like that's so old news. It's not trendy anymore. I'm like, I'm not doing it to be trendy. I'm doing it because she looked fucking hot in them. And I want to look fucking hot in assless chaps too. Yeah. Also, it's interesting. And the interesting thing about TikTok is so many people do things just to get views. Yeah. Like so much. So it was interesting. Like, I want, like, I saw a lot of people like rating our outfits and stuff and I wanted to watch every single one. But then another part of me didn't because I'm like, yo, some people are just like really trying to get whatever views. And I'm like, I don't know. Like I liked my outfits. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And the thing is, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And even if it's not for views and someone truly just wants to do fashion reviews on TikTok, you're allowed to do that. We were twirling at a fucking festival, we, having fun. We were having if a great time. If I was time. sitting at home in my bed, I would be ra- I would be roasting people's fits too. That's the thing. And like, <laughs> I look forward to every award show because I love watching Cody the Ko fashion. and Kelsey Kreppel sit down at I their house and Kelsey. in their t-shirts review people's fashion yeah and that's what I look forward to and to me that is the exact same thing someone on TikTok is reviewing what we're wearing and if they don't like it that's so fine I think there's also a way you don't have to be like mean about it because I think they obviously just how like we see a picture of January Jones or Timothy Chalamet or whoever at a carpet and we're like ew hate the dress yeah like to us it's like ew hate the dress but what if they felt amazing in it yeah well I also think it has just made this shift um specifically for weekend one where people are like how it's so sad this used to be about music and now it's just about fashion but that's the same thing with award shows it's like it used to just be about the awards and now it's at, now it's about people like stunting looks and trying to da 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 like that's just how it is now if you want a real ass festival you go to weekend two the <laughs> difference is it's the complete opposite you do not go to weekend two looking to stunt fits like literally like you like you'd go to listen to music which is why we're going back because weekend one was such a social thing which i loved and we ran into so many fans and viewers and so many friends too. But it was to the point where I, I couldn't even enjoy the festival because every single time like someone would be on and we'd be like, oh, like our, our group's over here. What do we do? Um, we saw a few people, but there was a lot of people that one we missed or two, I like didn't fully enjoy wa- like even Harry Styles. I'm so embarrassed. I left early and I regret it. It was right before Shania Twain came I, out. I don't know. It- it's on me, but I don't know if I can ever forgive you for that one. No, technically it's on me, but you were with me. So we'll go. No, no, no. Together. That's what I said. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not blaming you, no, no, but I'm but, blaming but you. I was the one who was like, <laughs> she started it. I will say I had a really bad headache and I was like, I don't know why. Like, I was just like, ah, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm good to go. And then everyone was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good to go too. And then I just wish I stayed. That was my biggest L of the weekend. That perfectly segues into the other thing I was talking about, which is the two big conversations that I saw within TikTok, which was the influencer fashion. Mm-hmm. And the other thing was I saw a lot of people talking about how influencers only go to Coachella for engagement or to be somebody. Me being a bitch right now, I'm like, whoever said that has never been. No, I think there was validity. <laughs> no, I think there's validity in what they're saying. Really? Yeah, for sure. I'm sure there are I a don't. lot of influencers. Well, a that's lot. what I was that's what I was getting to. Oh. A lot of influencers go because they want to be seen and they want to go to these parties and they want to be somebody. But I I can't speak to like for us, I saw and I was like, oh no, not for us at all. We love going with our friend group. We love going 
and actually partying and going to music sets. And like, yeah, I love being social and talking to like other influencers and like other friends in between sets and things, but we're going there because we want to like see people and we want to watch the music and hear the music and have a fun time and twirl in the fucking field. Oh my God. Well, that's the thing. Whether you want to go for any reason, you can go. <laughs> like if people want to go and be social and be seen, they can go do that. If people want to go for the music, they can do that. So I just, I don't, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people have just opinions about I just Coachella thought that was like year. a very broad opinion. I was like, I'm sure there are quite a few influencers who do that. And then I even saw, I won't name names, but I did see a big influencer being like, yeah, I like to go to get engagement on my posts. And I was like, oh, I've never even thought about that. Like their Coachella content, yeah, Coachella's content does do better, but that's not a reason to go. That's not our reason to go to Coachella. It does do better, but that's just like a great side piece of it Sorry, for us having fun. Right I was so confused. I was just like, interesting. It, see, I, when I saw the influencer, yeah. I was like, whoa, I've never thought about it like that. But then seeing an influencer and a big influencer that saying that, and then seeing someone who's not an influencer, just a normal take on Coachella saying that, I was like, oh, they are, so they are no, putting that together. So this is where I feel old. Because since we've gone for so long, like this is a new wave of people talking about it. And I'm like, oh, these kids don't know. Like, that's how I feel. I'm like, oh my God, like they're new to this. Like, that's how I feel. And it makes me feel so old. I have just as much fun as when I went with all of my college friends as I do with everybody now. And like going from, obviously going from GA in college to like going as an artist guest now, which is fucking insane. Like I have just as much fun. I have to ask. I just have to wait and less lines to pee, which is yes, fantastic. Even better. <laughs> did you go into the artist section to view any set? I did, yes. You did? Yes. I didn't. At all? No. Bitch. <laughs> I know, I know. And for me, what was hard is Tiki and I talked about it so many times because most of our other friends had VIP, which is still like an amazing one. We somehow got artist guest passes. And every time TK and I wanted to go to the front, we didn't want to leave the, our friends. I get it. I also like, it's just, it feels claustrophobic when you're pushed up against people. Yeah. And like that artist section that they give to people, if you have that wristband, small. it's so small. Yeah. so small. And as fun, it's so small, as fun it is, as it is. I mean, I'm also 5'3". I can't see anything at any, <laughs> wherever I am, I can't see anything. So there's really no point. I like being where I can have open air to spin around and not be pushed up against this, someone I don't know. This is where we bond. I would much rather, I'm not someone who's like, get to the front, da, 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 because I want to dance. I want to move. I hate like, like I hate when I'm like being bumped by people or like, oh my when God. When you feel trapped. When you feel trapped and you're just like, I'm not going to find my friends. I want food, but I will not be able to find them again. Oh Although I am quite good at finding my friends. I will say. I, I have a friend is. who is a very front of the line person. And we went to see Frank Ocean a few years ago. And Frank oh Ocean gosh, fans also are like really hardcore. Yeah. So we had to stand there for actually like, I think like three hours just waiting for him to come out. They were like chucking water bottles into the abyss See, that scares me. so that people just like wouldn't pass out. One hit me in the head. Yes, it did. <laughs> and um, like the, like everybody was just like sardines pressed. Yeah. And if you had to pee, you couldn't go. Yeah. Like if you literally passed out, you couldn't leave. Like it was crazy. So I like to have open air. Yeah, I just, I like being a little fairy. I agree. We're well, let's, good fairies together. let's walk through our entire weekend from start to finish, shall start we? To finish. I think this was a pretty pretty eventful weekend, I will say. This really was. Um, I mean, day one. Let's start. Let's start hot. All right, Friday, day one. Let's go. Uh, Alicia, you know what I'm looking at right now over there? Your away uh, luggage. It's the only luggage that I use. My away. Oh. I've been buying for years. Mm -hmm. I literally just bought one for Cal for Christmas because it makes an incredible gift. The quality, the structure, the colors, also, everything. Luggage is one of those things that everyone wants, but you don't want to buy it yourself. You always feel like you can spend your money. You're like, oh, I don't want to splurge. I'm like, I don't know. It's the best gift to give people. Oh, it's the amazing. Best. And especially if it's as good of quality as a way, like truly, I'm not just saying this, you guys, I've tried so much luggage in my life yeah. because we travel and we have traveled a lot. Away is the one that I consistently go back to and buy and even buy for gifts, which I feel like says a lot. I just got the, uh, the carry on. Guess what color I got? Hmm. Lavender. <gasps> I saw that I one. Got the it. Cute. I was, I've been obsessed with purple. I love it. I have the, I, what I love is they have like the carry-on, they have the bigger carry-on, they have like the full size luggage, they have so many options and they're just amazing. There's obviously like a little lock at the top so you can keep your goods all nice and safe. And truly it's just like so well made. I cannot recommend it enough. Every single suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help you pack more in and a hidden and 
and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. That is something that I always forget to pack is a, a, like a laundry bag oh, for yeah. my dirty clothes. I love the little mesh zipper too. I always yeah. use that to put my underwear and my socks in. Like I know where everything in my away goes. Also what's great is they have 360 degree spinner wheels. So it makes it go, like makes going through the airport Glide. so smooth and easy. Also, as I said, there's a TSA approved combination lock. So everything stays safe. And you know what the coolest thing is, and that's why I also keep buying, is they have a hundred day trial on everything that they make. So you can take the product on the road. You can like actually use it. And if you don't like it, you have a hundred days to return it and get your money back. And full refund. I mean, hello. <laughs> and also Away offers free shipping and returns on any order within the contiguous US, Europe, Canada, and Australia. Start your 100 day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash basic. That's awaytravel.com slash basic. Friday, day one, we've gotten to the house. Mm -hmm. Who was in our house? Everyone in our house was pretty much like our friends, which I really liked. Um, it was the pretty basic Coachella house. Hashtag PB Chella house. Yes. Yeah, so we got a house that was walking distance from the festival, which was so nice. Every night we could just walk back. It was like a 30 minute walk. It was like not too bad at all. Um, and it was me, TK, Remy, Cal, Murph, Kaylee, Taryn, Ashley, her boyfriend, our friends, Haley and Brian, TK's brother, PK, and then his best friend, Nate. And then Alexis Oakley was also there. She was doing her makeup and killed it. And I, Kaylee? Oh, Ollie. I was going to say you forgot someone. Ollie Marie, my lover. Ollie. It was such a fun group. And Alicia and I said before we went, it is the hashtag PB Shell House. So we were able to make some rules. And we didn't do the sign, but we should have done the sign. Yeah. And on the sign, we were going to write pretty basic house rules for the weekend. Number one, rule number one, no drama. No number drama. two, revert to number one. <laughs> number three, revert to number one and two. No <laughs> drama. That's and all we wanted. There was no drama. Not a lick of drama. Like, it was the, not like, not, not even a little drop. Like, nope. Which, from past years where there was a lot of drama, so we just love maturity. We love growth. We love no drama. We love numbers one, two, and three. Numbers one, two, and three. D, all of the above. It was fantastic. I'm going to be a little honest. I was expecting at least a little tiff. No, there's always Something one. Something small. There's always one. I think it was also because we had like a mixture of ages and like people who are a little bit older, who are a little bit more mature, who are like, you know. I also feel like I... like. And I'm not saying that people weren't in the past. I really felt like everyone was so grateful, mm. like that we brought them, included them. And they're not every saying in the past. I'm not saying in the past, but that there it wasn't that way. I just feel like this time, like everyone was so down to like pitching for chores, to cook, to like, um, you know, just clean up, like l random stuff like that. I just felt, I personally really felt appreciated um, for, you know, like bringing everyone, taking everyone, um, I don't know. I just, I really liked that. I felt. I agree. I was telling Cal, I was like waking up in the morning and not feeling stressed to cook for everybody yeah. was something that I've never experienced and was so beautiful. And I will never be cooking for anyone ever again. <laughs> She's like, cooking with Remy is tapped After out. After this piece. And that's just something I'm, I know every friend group experiences this when there's someone who has a strength in something, for instance, you're cooking, um, you know, it kind of you're falls. You're cleaning. I'm obviously cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of falls on that person's shoulders of like expect, like people kind of expect not, you know, not in a mean way. They just expect, oh, it's, Remy will probably cook. You just take it for cook. granted. Yeah, they, exactly, they, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, or even me in the past, I've always, I always felt pressure, whether people put it on me or not to like be the one to get everyone's photos. You know what ah. I mean? Because I was like, fuck, like obviously like, I know I'm like, I know I would, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I did not. And I'm such a I know I'm so gone. But I know anytime I saw other people like cook breakfast, I saw your face was, so, you were like smiling so big. Like, oh my God, this is so, and it was good. Too. Oh, it was delicious. I didn't lift a finger until the last day to cook something. I was yeah. like, let me do something like, around here. I got here. a salad and it was a bomb It was a bomb bar. Salad. It wasn't just a salad, it was a salad bar. It was lime garlic shrimp yes. with corn, <laughs> with tomatoes, corn. jalapenos, <laughs> Um, onions, avocado, champagne vinaigrette, and um, a light spring mix. <laughs> <laughs> and Lay's potato chips. It was lovely. Okay, so Friday, we're, our whole house is having so much fun. We're like pre-gaming. We go to this pre-party, which was at the Fanjoy house, which obviously Eli was there. Eli was living his best life, and we got some cute pics. We just did like a little stop by. They had some bomb food. I ate about 12 Wingstop wings because I thought... I need to live today. So I'm going to eat these wings right now. I feel like at this point, I was like 
I was probably like a five and a half on the drunk scale. Okay. Like I was, I was definitely a little tipsy. I know I was more drunk than I probably thought I was, but I definitely did not feel like crazy drunk or anything like that. Um, we ran into Lauren there and Tiff. Um, who else did we see there? There was like a hand, there was actually a lot of people there, but, um, but quickly, you know, we were like, we got to get to the, f- the festival. Like yeah. we, we need to see some music. I need to dance. I need to twirl. So we get in an Uber. It takes forever. We end up getting out and walking the rest of the way just because the, the line was like the, ugh, the Uber situation at Coachella is just like rough. Like it's so bad. It's so bad. Well, actually we went in two different cars. Your car went first and then my car went after. And so we're driving and we're in bumper to bumper traffic. Like, so my car is like pulling up like inch by inch by inch. And then someone goes, is that Alicia? <laughs> and it's you and Ollie, Ollie dragging his yeah. feet, creating so much dust behind him, like hunchback, like yeah, posture, baby. just like dragging, dragging. And I was like, he's going to try and get in our car right now. Also, I thought he was, no, 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 no. You know, it's funny. Um, speaking of him getting in your car, we walked past, we were probably a, a good few steps ahead finally. And I was like, well, you can get in their car if you want. He goes, there's no room. <laughs> he already considered <laughs> it. <laughs> he already considered it. <laughs> we, I was like, I'm not getting out because we made the mistake three years ago at the last Coachella. We got there far too early in the day on day one and it ruined my whole weekend because I was exhausted. Yeah. And I overexerted myself on the first day. So when we were in this car and the Uber driver is like, <laughs> yeah, do you want to walk? I was like, mm-mm. Keep on trucking, sir. Keep on going. So I'm sitting there in the air conditioning, enjoying myself. Kaylee has the smallest bladder, the bladder a size of a literal pea. So she (laughs) was complaining, 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 but she doesn't pee outdoors. Like when I took her to Hawaii, this bitch refused to pee in the ocean, the world's largest bathroom. (laughs) And so we'd be at the the beach all day long and she wouldn't, she'd hold her pee all day long because she refused to go. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. For her to go outside. For her to go when we were on the bus. So we were like, I was like, you you have to go. Like, unless you want to, even if you run, you're not going to make it to the festival still. Yeah. So like go crouch behind a tree and go pee. She was like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. But then it got too bad that she needed to. So she and Cal both needed to go. They hop out of the car. That's right when we see you guys. So there's just a lot of ruckus happening. Oh my God. Cal goes, it's so easy for a man to pee in the wild. Are you fucking kidding me? So jealous. He, boom, done. Back in the car. Kaylee, we're watching, trying to go from tree to tree to Aww. tree, goes across the street. Street, tries to jump a fence to make it behind <laughs> it and then all of a sudden I just like I'm watching her and I'm watching her like internal monologue and she goes and starts just walking to the festival Aww. doesn't even come back to the car just fucking books it to That's the festival so, so I was like I'll see her when I get there we're just sitting in the car Finally, we make it to the festival, but then that's why I didn't see you because we split up. Well, you had to go to Carly Rae. Oh, yes. Okay. (laughs) So in case anybody doesn't know, we have a little meme within our friend group that Cal is obsessed with Carly Rae, which it's a meme, but he also is, but I've made it a way bigger thing. But basically how this meme came to be was Cal, Ollie, and I went to Life is Beautiful a few years ago and Carly Rae was playing and Ollie and Cal were fangirling. They were so excited. We had to be up against the fucking ledge so they could touch her hands. And I thought, mm, she's not my thing. I'm gonna go get some food. So there, <laughs> I went right to the food truck next to them and I walk up and I order a chicken sandwich. And the girl goes, I'm so sorry. It's, we're like really backed up. It's gonna take about 30 minutes. And I went, take your time make it an hour. I couldn't yeah, care less. I yeah. have nowhere to be right now. I have a whole set worth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I got a whole, at Carly Rae's whole hour long set. So I'm just standing there waiting, waiting, like maybe 20 minutes pass by and I look at my phone and Ollie's texted me. Hi Rem, I miss you. Are you okay? Just wanted to check in. Is everything okay? And then right above it, I have a text from Cal that in all caps, it says, where the fuck are you? Carly Rae is on. <laughs> so since then it's become a meme that Cal is obsessed with Carly Rae. My aunt for Christmas got him a champion sweatshirt, but I'm- the C champion says Carly Rae Jepsen on oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think about getting him something Carly Rae for his birthday. Please. So he loves it. He's like, so he thinks it's, he's so over the meme, but he gets it. Yeah. So we get there. He knew every lyric to every song he was surrounded by all the most beautiful hot gays who were all just like, <laughs> call me maybe. Yeah. And Ollie was living it. Ollie, Ollie and I were sharing a sandwich and just vibing. Then we went on to the Rose Garden after. And I then- I didn't even go to the Rose Garden. We'll go this weekend, bitch. Okay, okay. Then we made it back. I can't remember exactly what happened because I got pretty drunk day one. Who else was on? Well, I saw City Girls. Yes, yeah, City Girls. That night was um, Harry. Oh my God. We ran into Tommy and Pranav. I ran into Sarah. 
Oh, we saw Sarah. It looks as though Army's assistant. I did see Lewis the child for a hot minute, but I was sober by that point, so it really wasn't that fun. Then I ate some pizza, and Why then I think this? that was a wrap on day one for me. No, I'm literally, th- I'm like, d- <gasps> oh, we did see Phoebe. I, but I'm also like, what did I do? I saw, but like, what did I do? And I must have been more than a five and a half. <laughs> I did get, I did get, I lost you for a minute and I hadn't seen you all day that I did get a Even, little. Where did I go? Who was I with? I was you with were Murph. with Murph. Yeah, yeah. So oh. like for, a, I lost you for quite a bit of the day and I was fine until like maybe 7 p.m. Then I was like, I haven't seen her in a long time. Is she okay? And then I went up to Ash and I was like, is she okay? She's like, she's fine. Don't worry about her. Wait, I, okay. I have a distant memory of me and Murph saying, let's go be fairies. Let's walk around. And then we just like went. <laughs> And then you were at Phoebe Bridgers. You lost him for a while. Yes. yes. Oh, but then we ran into Matt and Patricia and we went to Phoebe and then I took a shot. <laughs> Think I had another drink. And then it was it's just a little gray. And then it was all fuzzy after that. And then that. hairy and then headache. And, and then, then home. Yeah. And then then we home. walked home and I wore those Prada boots to the fucking festival. Not just any Prada boots, bitch. You got to explain. I wore. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so my meltdown about my assless chaps. Oh my God. My meltdown about my assless chaps. So I was like having a full panic attack that people were going to make fun of me and I'm a soft bitch. So I was like, but I'm so proud of uh, you. Thank you. Um, like, I, that's hard. I got the outfit made and I was like really excited about it. And then when I put it on, I feel like I was expecting like, Oh my God. And I was kind of just like, Oh, I don't really know. Like, I don't know how I feel. And I wanted to, f- you want to feel good in it, oh, you know, yeah. especially an assless chaps where your ass is out you want to feel like I'm a hot bitch so I was like not in love with it so then I spent about six hours hand rhinestoning individual little baby rhinestones all over it to make me feel a little bit more special a little more a little sparkle yes I felt a little better so that made me feel better and then when I sent Alicia pictures of me wearing it I wore it with some like tennis shoes and she was like honestly it's really cute I just don't feel like the look is fully complete like I feel like the shoes kind of ruin it so I was like okay what shoes should I wear and she Mm -hmm. said Rem go upstairs put on your white Prada boots and I was like oh I was like it's the tennis shoes like it just doesn't give like like, it's not giving what it needs to be gave. No, but I was like, it looks good. I want you to be comfy, but at least for the photo that you take at the beginning of the day to post on Instagram, wear, wear boots, wear combat, like make it like, cause I feel like assless chaps is very like cowboy. Like that was the past. I was like, make it just more like edgy, you know, it'll, yeah. it'll give it more. I agree. And so, and you need like a chunky boot because mm-hmm. I have short chunky legs. So I needed to like, I couldn't wear like a tiny shoe. I needed yeah. to like even it out. So I went upstairs and I put on my little Prada boots, which I had bought <laughs> in the winter time when I went to Aspen at the Prada store there. So they're fur lined Prada boots. And I am not going to go buy another pair of the same boots just without the fur lining for no goddamn reason and Mm -hmm. spend all that money. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? The boots looked great. I'm wearing fur lined boots to Coachella. Mm -hmm. So I wore them all day. And surprisingly, I have sweaty feet and they weren't that sweaty, (laughs) but I had the worst blisters of my life. I pretty much needed to be carried home that night. And now to this day still, I can't walk properly. No, I see that's where it's like, ah, oh, day, like it would have been nice for that to be day three. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The blister situation. Full send it though. Um, But the next morning, let's go to day two. We wake up and what do we see, Miss Remy Ashton? <gasps> oh, uh, Miss Remy Ashton in her assless chaps. As people all. said we're 2019. Thank you. 2019 was in vogue. <laughs> You know, it's so funny. I woke up and I saw it. I didn't think it was like that. I was like, that's exciting. But I didn't like, I'm not one to also like tell everybody. And not for worse dress. Keep in mind, <laughs> not for worse dress. She was in, t- uh, I think it was like best influencer looks of 2022. Oh, Coachella, shit. Something like that. Who's talking now? Person on your couch saying that was 2019 <laughs> and ugly. Make that's a TikTok. She's a Vogue. <laughs> Fucking Vogue. Okay. That's all I wanted. Like, uh. But what I loved is I said nothing. I woke up and I saw it and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then I moved on with my day. And then the, we're all like pre-gaming and Alicia makes everybody shut. She's like, shut the fuck up. She's like, I need everyone to know. Miss Remy Ashton is in Vogue. And everyone went, Great! It was so cute. It was just such a nice, like heartwarming moment. Everybody was so sweet. No, but I think like on a real note, I think that just goes to show like you really can't, 
like, like how hard, like, I know it was hard for you to be like, oh, like, what if people are mean? Like, I know this is a statement, like, oh my, like overthinking it. And then still seeing, I'm sure after you posted people commenting stuff being like, ooh, I don't know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then for the next day for fucking Vogue to say that it was like one of the best looks, like, I think it just shows how it's like, you know what? In the end, like do what you want to do. Like what you were saying earlier, like wear what you want to wear. Don't let other people's opinions like get to you. Like don't like just be, just do you. I don't know. Like I was so proud of you because I know how hard it was for you when you had your meltdown about your outfit um, and like worrying about if people were going to leave mean comments and stuff. And then seeing that Vogue thing, I was like, holy shit, this isn't just like, I'm trying to think of another outlet to compare it to, but I don't want to like drag another outlet. <laughs> <laughs> just <dirt. laughs> We're talking Vogue. Even if this ain't no Tiger Beat. This is Vogue, okay? That's all I'm saying. And I just like, Anna Wintour was like, damn, that girl's serving. Because no one else is fucking serving this year. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm just I must clarify it was Vogue Singapore, but still meant just as much to me. And no. I was so excited to celebrate with Jesse too, because Jesse took the photo. Yes. And for a photographer to be featured their photo in Vogue, like he yes. was crying. It was so cute. Oh, that's a bucket list thing. I don't know. I'm being, a, I'm just being a little brat, but. No, um, I love it. It was um, so sweet. I'm just hyping you up because I know you, you've, you need to know how big of a deal that is. And that's insane. I appreciate I was it. not featured in Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what you'll be in. But my best friend <laughs> What's happening at the Oscars? I don't know, but Remy knows. I don't know, but Remy knows. <laughs> I love you. Oh my God. Okay, day two, we get to the festival. We get to the festival. Oh wait, no, we got fucking trashed and then went to the Liquid <laughs> IV free party. Oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> So honestly, Liquid IV knows how to throw down. That was the best party. No, like I left with Kaylee and Murph in my car and we all were just like, how the fuck was that so fun? I went, I so drunk, went up to the Liquid IV girl and I was like, this is the best party I've ever been to. Oh my God. No, I was telling her that the whole night. I we So basically we worked with Liquid IV um, and we legally, contractually had to attend this party. Um, now I will say there are times in the past where we've gone to parties. That's like part of the, you know, deliverables that you have to do. And you know, you, you definitely make your stories look a little more fun than it is. You know, you're like, yeah, <laughs> and then you go just away. you're like, Hey, did it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> this was so, I was blown away. Jack Harlow performed more importantly, so Sweetie performed. It was such an intimate crowd. However, it was still a big party and we were so close. Like I could see the sweat on his brow. I could see Sweetie fucking shaking her ass. She looked so good. I am a Sweetie stan. I, I, I want to fall in love hot, for the hot weekend. Take. I thought she performed so much better than him. Well, because she had choreography and dancers and wig and BBL. And we were like, like, like Jack Harlow, someone when you, and BBL. The BBL Most was BBLing BBL. so well. I was like, yeah, <laughs> girl, go. I feel like with Jack, his, his is more vibey. So you're just like, yeah, like dancing to him singing, but with Saweetie, we were dan like we were trying to do the choreo. Oh, we like, I was out. Yes, the I'm gonna fall in love. love, love. I um, love her. No, it was so much fun. Um, it was a beautiful property, not too far from the festival. So we were living like so excited to be there with them. Um, we also went with them to Neon Carnival later that night. But during the day after we went to the festival, I was definitely drunk. I literally just sent this morning um, the clips to my editor for day two and three that I combined. And I was looking over the footage to make the thumbnail. And I was sitting there looking at it and I was like, oh damn. I was like, I was having so much fun. Good. Like, I'm so glad I vlogged a lot more than I have in the past. Cause obviously in the past we were a little more PG. Like we didn't want to show us even with a drink in our hand, let alone like here I am. Trash. Like, sc trashed, <laughs> screaming to the camera, like twerking on the bus, like doing whatever. Um, but it was fun just to kind of like vlog. It felt like old school YouTube vlogging where you don't, you just like, you're just recording. It just felt l organic, and, Very organic and actually fun. And more so just like how we're always saying, we love vlogging to have those memories. This is the most organic memory we could have. Us oh, yeah. trashed on a bus and actually sharing that with people. I um I already posted my day one vlog. Go watch it. Go watch Remy's vlogs. Day two is going up soon. There's a part where you and I are vlogging while we're watching. I think it was Meg the Stallion. And you hear me go, update up. No, you, you guys just can't even hear me. Like literally <laughs> I was stumbling my words so much. Um, and both of us, it's just like our eye, like it was so fun. I don't know, it was, it was super fun. It was a great time. So we leave Liquid IV. They all, like also I must just say, 
we love liquid IV oh, in our I, normal lives. I had lives. so much that weekend. It saved my life this weekend. Yeah. We, they even had like slushy version. <gasps> that's probably why we weren't hungover. Oh. I had a lot of liquid IV. I'm not kidding. I mean, I did a hangover routine on my channel like a couple years ago. And like li liquid IV, I, is a, I wake up, I'm like, <gasps> liquid IV. No. And then you're, you're saved yes. every time. But oh. also, you know what I've learned? Drink it before. Mm -hmm and drink it after. Mm. I used to only do the morning after when you're already hungover, but it helps the hangover if you do it yeah. before, mm -hmm. even pregame with it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but anyways. <laughs> so we went to the party, we got to the festival, I lost you again. And it's just Ollie, Cal and I standing in VIP. And we're just, actually no, we were with PK and Paul. <laughs> and we're all just hanging out. And then all of a sudden, Ollie starts freaking out. Oh my God. Freaking out. Turns out Cal had tapped Ollie and went, oh my God, look. Car Carly Ray's right there. Oh my God. Carly Ray's right there. Oh wait, I didn't hear this part. So he's like, Cal Ollie's, Cal's being cool. Ollie's losing his shit. Ollie would spot her. Ollie grabs me and we start running after her. And so we're like, not running. We, we were trying to be cool. But she was like maybe like 50 feet away sitting by a tree. She looked like she was talking to like a manager of some yeah. sort or something. And so we start like walking over and you, you know, the manager, like you could see us approaching Carly Ray. Like she, she knew what was happening. And so they're like talking, talking Carly Ray's back is to us. I love that her name is Carly Ray. Carly Ray's back is to us. And she's like leaning down, talking to the manager. The manager's like watching us as we're like all three of us slowly yeah. <laughs> walking over. And then as I'm like, actually five feet away, a group of subscribers stopped me. So of course I'm going to talk to them. Of course. So I turn around, I talk Priorities. to them for like maybe like three minutes or so. We're like having a nice conversation. We take our photos, they leave. I turn back around because also Cal would never go up to Carly Ray. Mm. I have to go up to yeah. Carly Ray for him. So we go over and as soon as I'm literally two feet away, Carly Ray fucking books it. <gasps> she fucking books it. Oh no. She ran away. She's running away from us. And I was also so drunk that I like, yeah. In my sober state, I would have picked up on the social cues. Carly Rae doesn't or, want to meet or us. Or in your sober state, you would have realized she was just walking away. But no, when bitch. <laughs> she was running away. She was running away. Oh my God. It's okay. She Well, she had to go do something. So she, oh, she yeah. ran she away. She had to perform. So we're, so we're like, I, I, even me drunk, I was like, she doesn't want to meet us. It's okay. Ollie's like, no. Ollie starts running. <gasps> I've never seen Ollie I've go never more than run. a snail's pace in my life. <laughs> he was like, no, we're going. He starts running. So I'm chasing Ollie. <laughs> Cal's chasing me. We're all chasing Carly Ray. <laughs> we're running. And then she all of a sudden like goes into like a little private area and she's just like having a minute by herself. And she's like in between these like little dividers. And so I like, I looked at her and I was like, okay, like obviously I'm not gonna go up to her right now. So we waited to the side and we're all just like chatting and we're talking, we're talking. Um, waiting for her to just like come back out again. And then as soon as she starts coming out, Ollie like fucking like, <laughs> and I literally, no joke, slide in front of her and I go, hi, Carly Ray," And she's like, hi. I was like, my boyfriend and I are your biggest fans. Can he take a picture? <laughs> can can <laughs> he, he take, take a picture? picture? <laughs> and she was like, okay. So he jumps in. I, and also like, I'm, you know, when you just don't, really want to talk to someone and then yeah. you're just like having an off day or like, mm. I'll be, of course you're going to be nice, but you're never going to be like overly super. Exactly. And it. that's exactly how Carly Ray was feeling that day. So I literally like this. Thank you so much, Carly Ray. <laughs> Your set yesterday was amazing. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I went, I have genuinely two photos on my phone. I oh went, my God. I'm surprised you didn't just burst it. Oh, I was, I should have honestly, yeah. but I was really drunk. And so we take the two photos. She could not look more bothered. She was <laughs> oh, so, wait, put, it, put it on the so, screen. Please put it look, on the screen. Look at her face. <laughs> Carly Ray hates Cal, spread it around. Look at how genuinely happy Cal oh, is. He's so and happy. she's like, get the fuck off me. I would have never recognized her. Oh, I Cal has Carly Ray vision. And then Wit was editing my vlog yesterday, and I need to play you this clip that I have no recollection of getting, but this is the audio on my vlog clip after with you and me. Yeah, so we met Carly Rae. It was life changing. I wouldn't have changed any part of it for anything. I love that she didn't want to meet us. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. I just, I, I wish we could like somehow count up the amount of times in this podcast that you've even just said the name Carly Rae Jepsen. Absolutely. Like, she really should be paying you for all the marketing. I <laughs> honestly, Carly Rae and owes Cal, me some money. To be honest, and Cal. For the marketing. Well, while you were meeting Carly Rae, uh, probably an hour or so after that, I. I had a little incident where, you know, when something happens and you, you know what 
the truth in your gut. Like, you know, like, you know. Yeah. I, I look down and I feel my pockets and I don't feel my phone. Oh my God. And I think instantly it was stolen. Like instantly. Oh. I'm like, oh no, I was with Murph and Kay. We're walking. We we went into, um, you know, the beer garden right next to VIP. Yeah, and those are the worst people to be with for you to lose your phone. <laughs> Love them so much, but like they will be no yeah, help. Yeah. They will be no yeah, help. Yeah, Murph and Kay. <laughs> um, so, so we go over there to meet Evan and I, I, I feel, and I go, my phone's fucking gone. Mm. Oh my God, someone stole my phone. Keep in mind, 2019, Ashley had her phone stolen out of her backpack. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, so I knew, I was like, this is a thing. Hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of phones get stolen at Coachella every single year. Like people just take them, they sell them, they make money. Like it's literally like a whole science. People go like buy wristbands to just go steal phones. Well, think about it. You could sell each one for like 1K. Yeah, like you that's could why sell- when you offered 500, I knew they were good. I know. <laughs> So, be, I, I was going to gonna say something when you texted. I'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said 500. I went, no, no. But you should have told me I would have done more, bitch. Oh, You're like, it's okay. It's gone. No, no, no. I knew it was gone. I was like, damn it. Murph, Kate are being so, they're like, oh my God. Do you think it's still like, let's find it. Let's find your oh, iPhone. And I, and I so take it back. We, we do the find my iPhone. It shows it um, right outside of VIP. And I'm like, here's the thing, it's gone. Like, it's not, it's not like it's just laying on the floor. Like someone has it, we're not gonna find it. They're like, no, 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 let's go. Look. And I was like, no, like I, I, it's gone, it's okay. Um, so I formally like, apologized to them. It sounds like they were very helpful. Oh no, they were great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but I was, I was just like, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They're like, wait, why don't we call it? Why don't we call it? They're calling, they're doing everything. Um, and it, it, texts were being delivered. So I was like, okay. Um, I was like, it's it's cool. We go, we find you, you and Ollie are like, oh my God, like, where's your phone? I was like, no, 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 it's okay, guys. But you were like, no, 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 let's text them. So I'm like, okay, we text from your phone. <laughs> Let me read it verbatim. Please read it verbatim. This it's is so the hilarious. conversation Alicia and I had on Saturday throughout the day. I text her earlier in the day, where are you? We're meeting Carly Ray. You text, coming to bar now. I text, come to puke tree, <laughs> which in case you didn't know, three years ago, I projectile vomited on a tree and we claimed that as the puke tree and that's our meeting spot now yeah then at 10 p.m you text from my phone to you please give me my phone i'll pay you i promise five hundred dollars <laughs> now or never <laughs> as i saw you type 500 i thought mm, they could sell it for 15 you're but, not getting a bag bitch but like you should have told me. I know. You know what's funny? In my head, I knew. I was like, that's not that much. <laughs> like, I was like, they want more money. They want 20, 20 grand. Yeah, Meet so, at the puke tree. Oh, literally. So I did. I locked the phone and everything. And here's the thing. I was thinking, okay, it's not a big deal. I'll just go get a new one in the morning. Like it sucks, but I'm not going to let that ruin my weekend. Live in the moment, Alicia. You have your vlog camera. You have people's phones. Like it's okay. Like there are worse things going on in the world than you just losing your phone. You know, you're not the only one that happened to this weekend. <clears throat> Um, so just keep that in mind all night. It, here's, here's my toxic, uh, trait about it. And this is how, you know, you're probably addicted to your phone. I kind of loved it. <laughs> no, it's good. I was good like, off of it. I was like, oh, no one can get a hold of me. I have no <laughs> responsibilities. I can go run. And you know what? I'll find people like, like if I lose them, I'll have, I'll just find them. And people aren't worrying about me. Cause they're like, oh, she doesn't have a phone versus being like, why aren't you answering? Are you okay? I was yeah. just like, you know what? Like I'm fine. I'm living. I'm okay. Untraceable. I kind of, I kind of loved it. You know, I was like, oh, I can't log into Instagram. I can't do anything. I just have to live in the moment. It's amazing. I have to add a story right before you, or actually probably while you were in the midst of losing your phone, Cal and I went over to Brockhampton because Cal is a super fan. And also in case you didn't know, they're a group of, I want to say there's like nine or 10 of them. There's, it's a big group of people. And and this weekend or weekend one and weekend two are their last performances ever as a group. And then they're disbanding. Yeah. So it was like a big deal to go see them. And then that's the time that I use the artist bands. Cause I was like, oh my God, oh, Cal, nice. we need to get super close. We need to like, we want to see it all. It's going to be so good. So we go all the way over there and we get the artist band. Or we like go into like the artist section. And as soon as I walk in, I lock eyes immediately with Emma Chamberlain. Oh, and like the clean. light just shines on us. And I was like, <laughs> And we ran and hugged each other. And then we were talking. And then I went, oh, Emma, this is Cal. And she goes, I know you, Cal. I watched the vlogs. And Cal literally like <laughs> looking at Emma Chamberlain was like, holy shit. Emma Chamberlain knows me. Like he was freaking out. He freaked out. out more over her than Carly Rae. Yes, honestly. <laughs> and I support that. Yes. Emma would take a nice smiley picture. Yes, she would. So they, like, they met each other. It was so sweet. And then we saw the whole set. And the set was amazing. Oh my God. So, so good. We have to go back this I weekend. Want like, to. It was, I'm, I was sad I didn't see them. It was incredible. 
incredible. Oh my God. And they ended on, there's a song that Cal really, really wanted to see. It's called Summer. And it's like, I, I told him, I was like, honestly, I don't think they're going to sing it because they'd done the whole set and they hadn't sang it still. Mm. And it's only one of the guys singing. I was like, there's so many of them. They're yeah. not going to just sing the song with one guy. Yeah. And they end with it. <gasps> and it's like a really beautiful, emotional song. Oh. And then the lights go out and we're like walking away. And then all of a sudden the lights come, boom back on and then the video starts playing on the screens and it's a video of them like in a green room talking and then all of a sudden this text pops up on the screen it says final album 2022 so they oh i just got chills. oh my god the crowd went wild so they announced there's one more album they're obviously and not gonna tour done. it but they're yeah. done and so that was really oh really my cool god, okay you know what else was um such a good like marketing genius move mm. Was when Olivia O'Brien yes. brought out Logan Paul. So good. Iconic. That was iconic. I want to know, like, how much persuading did that take I don't from think her? Much. Do you think no? I don't think much. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, let's do it. Oh my God. It was so good. I love that it started off as such like a a secret. And then now it's like a big thing that they're all just like laughing at. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So we went to, so Brockhampton ends, we walk back to the group and then Billie Eilish is coming on. Yes. And Cal's birthday was on Sunday, but obviously at midnight, Carly Rae. Cal's birthday's on Sunday, but obviously at midnight, Billy's still performing. So we're all just like waiting because we're going to go to the after party. Mm-hmm. It hits it hits midnight and PK starts oh. chanting, happy birthday, Cal, let's go. <laughs> happy birthday, Cal, let's go. Wait, I didn't realize it was midnight and that's why we were doing it. <laughs> yes, that's how time works, baby. You know what's so crazy too? Before the set started, Cal went, how crazy would it be if she played You Should See Me in a Crown at midnight? And bitch, I kid you not, midnight hit. She starts singing, you should see me in a crowd. Okay, I was like, one of my this is scary. Songs. Also, it's like an older song. So I was like, how did he predict see me in the that room. of all songs? I guess he likes that song. And so then PK starts chanting, happy birthday, Kel, let's go. Hey. Happy birthday, Kel, let's, let's go. go. It's like a slow song. We like Ocean Eyes is performing. Ah, happy birthday, Kel, let's, let's go. go. Hey. We're screaming it. And it was so much fun. So we're all singing that. And because Alicia's living in the moment, I don't know why I did this, but I, I happen to have... I want to say like three tequila Red Bulls oh. within the course of like an hour. Okay. Like like a lot. Like, it was for Cal. It was for Cal. I, I think because in my head the night before I got that headache and I like, I, I, I was just like, eh. I was like, I need to keep this up. We're going to Neon Carnival. We're trying to be out to like 5 a.m. Like I got to keep this up. We need caffeine. I was unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally unhinged. We... Went with Liquid IV to Neon Carnival. So they had this like big, like crazy um, party bus for us. We walk over there. Also, I did so good, like still sobering up talking to the Liquid IV girl because we walked from the festival all the way to the bus. And I was like, I ha- like, you know, this is where it's like work hard, play hard. This is still a business deal. I still need to like, you know, like, you know, turn it on. I fucking turned it on. I was like, oh my God, how are you? How was your weekend? Blah, blah, blah. Like making the best conversation, like not too crazy. But then once I got on that bus, unhinged Alicia came out. We were dancing. We literally, that was one of the highlights of the whole weekend for me. More than even Neon Carnival. Like Neon Carnival was so fun. But that bus ride, other than Remy sleeping the whole time, I had a blast. <laughs> I literally got on, I which I stopped drinking. Because I keep thinking if I drink too much, I'm going to throw up. And I just cannot throw up at Coachella again. No. Like it's so embarrassing. You and won't. I almost died. So <laughs> that's why I stopped drinking. We get on the bus. The music is fucking blaring. It's like, boom, it's like boom, I hear boom. ringing in my ears. And it's like, uh, da, 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 da. I'm like, Everybody was laughing. I slept on Cal the entire night and Taryn said she was watching me and I was like on him yes. and Cal was like trying to keep his left side still where I was and still like bumping yes. with the right. Yes. And I guess at one point he had to pee. He so he, he asked me to get off and I went, oh. Yes, I saw this. And then you, you put your feet up where he was sitting. Yes. <laughs> but I get it. You're like, okay, we have to go. Like you would have gone home, but you were like, I have to go. We have to get a photo. We have to like get our like deliverables done. I wanted to go too. I yeah. really did. I just was exhausted. No. Um. So living unhinged. It was great. We go to Neon Carnival. Half the group ended up like once we got there. Um, I said bye. Yeah. Half the group left. The other p- kind of part of us stayed. And I'm actually so glad we stayed because once we went to the dance floor, like Boom, like so fun, Aww. like so fun. Um, <laughs> it's, what? I'm thinking of the DJ that was like, oh. shout out North Dakota. Yeah, the, I guess he was uh, shouting out like random countries and states. Sunday rolls around. My first thought is I'm gonna go to at and I'm gonna go buy a new <laughs> phone. I'm gonna go to Apple. I'm just, I'm gonna go buy my phone. Um, it'll be perfect. I quickly have the thought, you know, you should Google, you know, what time they open. Thank God I did this. 
I don't recommend losing your phone before um, a holiday such as Easter, you know, when most stores are closed. AT&T, closed. Verizon, closed. I'm not even with Verizon, but I was like, I'll try. (laughs) (laughs) I'll switch. I'll switch. Apple, closed. I was like, damn it. What do I do? Target, closed. Like literally Best Buy, everything closed. And I was just like, oh my gosh, wait, like, what do I do? There was a Walmart open that sold iPhones. So Ashley's boyfriend, bless his heart, was like, hey, I'm already going to Walmart. Do you want me to go? And I can just buy you a phone. I was like, thank you so much. He goes, he calls me. Apparently it must be something with Apple and Walmart or the way that that licensing deal has gone by for them to actually sell phones. I couldn't just buy an unlocked phone. I had to buy, I had to like upgrade my, my plan and da, 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 da. I gave them all the information, which was correct over the phone. And they're like, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And I was like, oh my God, like, what do I do? So I was like, Hey, I don't want you wasting any more time. Thank you so much for trying. I'll just figure it out. How about I'll just, I'll just actually sign into my Instagram on Ashley's phone. This is perfect. You know, um, I'll, I'll have to wait another day to actually get a physical phone, but you know what? It, it's not that big. It really is not that big of a deal. Um, it's cool. So then I, I say, hey, Ash, can I steal your phone? I'm going to try to just log into my Instagram um, and do, I had like the liquid IV deals I had to post. I had so many like posting things to do. So I was like, okay, worst case, it's, it's, it's fine. I go to log in and it says, hey, two-factor verification, message sent to my phone number. And I think, okay, no problem. I'll go on my computer, you know, no text message comes. I do the thing anyone would do recent code. (laughs) No message comes through. I quickly look at my messages on my computer and notice that a lot of messages haven't come through that should have, you know? And I'm looking and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. This is like, it's saying the time was last night at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. or something like that. What did I do? Oh, I erased all. I, I went on find my friends. Not only did I lock my phone, I hit erase phone with all information on it. And I quickly realized that uh, be, that it was the smartest thing to do because then no one could get in my phone. However, it not only logged me out of literally ev- anything and everything, um, it made it to where I couldn't get my phone text messages on my computer. I could only do the iCloud. Tell them the truth. What? Why did you really want your messages? You said you wanted to know, you wanted to see people wondering where you were. Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I, I, everyone in the house I was <laughs> she was like I just know so many people were texting me wondering uh, yeah, where I am yeah. you know you know how like you're when you don't see your phone for a few hours and you're like oh my god there's gonna be so many yeah. messages and then there's, and there's only not- one from your mom <laughs> me all the time um that's all she cared about that's literally obviously all I cared about <laughs> I even told everyone I was like wait we should take a bet like how many messages do you think will be on my phone when I get it back you know no messages coming. No message. I'm like nothing even from her. And mom. then it hit nothing even from my mother. <laughs> then it hits me. Oh my god! Something's like I'm not getting messages. Yeah. Like I do every anything and everything that I can. I'm a very techie person. I'm thinking. Okay, I don't have my phone number to get this message to log into my Instagram. Is there an email? Da, da, da. I do, I kid you not. I do everything. I go. I started almost hacking my own phone back. Like I found every single thing possible to do to be able to log back into my like phone and make sure it's like nope. Because I, I'm i pretty sure it's because I hit erase all. Yeah. Because when I used to lo- use my phone, you can just lock including it. Including backups. Yeah. Which is where I fucked up. So <laughs> literally I'm like, oh my God, I should have just locked it. I shouldn't have erased it. Can't log into Instagram. Can't do anything. Can't even like, can't literally do anything. So I'm just like, damn, what do I do? And I figured, you know, worst case is these brands have to understand. Like I got my phone. Still, like, oh, I, can, I don't know what I can do. Finally, I'm like, I'm a little sad. I can't post my other, my, my third fit. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that was, that's how it went. I was like, okay, whatever. Like it's but not, better that than this person that stole your phone, God forbid, gets in and gets all exactly. your info and stuff. Like, Especially it's, like it's better. the credit cards that are linked to it and everything. I was just yeah. like, dang, like, so I'll say spoiler alert. We can come back to day three, but the next day I got a phone. There's no backups because I literally erased my phone. So I lost half my contacts. I lost half, lost half my photos. Um, and I was so just like, oh my God. Like I was just like, dang, I really did that wrong. So I'm not going to tell you to not lock your phone, but I'm just saying if you want a backup version of like lit all the apps. No, but when I used to get my phone stolen, I would get home, 
eyes closed, log onto my computer, and then within there you can lock it, but you don't have to delete everything. See, in my head I was like, oh, I need to erase it. Yeah, no, when you I, just have to lock it. I locked it and then I erased it, which was my problem. And it, I didn't even think about all of the backups. Yeah. So once I got a new phone, it's like it's like a brand new it phone. It backed up to like a certain point. It was just a sense, yeah, it's like a certain point. Like, like a very it, long a time very, ago. Like before I got my last phone is when it locked oh, it. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> so I lost so many numbers, but it's okay. Um, so if you're a friend, text me. <laughs> Probably don't have it. <laughs> new um, phone, who dis? New phone, who dis? Um, but yeah, so that was a little sad, but I was like, yeah, it's fine. And what's so funny is the amount of times that I've gotten tagged in that TikTok going around of the police yes. person finding, like I'm not kidding, thousands of times is like, at Alicia, at Alicia. It's like, uh, uh, this person was helping people find their stolen phones. He like collected like- it was a police officer. Uh, yes, he collected like a hundred stolen phones and people were trying to like find theirs. The amount of people that tagged me in that and even sent it to me via text, so freaking funny. Cause I was like, yeah. And I even looked, I was like, do you see a purple case? No, the best part, case to I my wa- case. it came up on my for you page as I'm sitting in the, in the living room and I go, oh my God, Alicia, <laughs> look at this TikTok. And from across the room, she goes, do you see mine? <laughs> it's like, like 50 mine? phones from afar. I was like, <laughs> I know I'm not going to see your phone. I'm just telling you. I was like the purple case to my case. Okay. <laughs> but also like they were on grass and the only part you'd see yes. is like this like small end. Yes, literally. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, it was funny. Oh, and then I got people messaging me being like, Loche, <laughs> you lost your ID in Vegas. Oh, let her live. And now people. you lost your phone. Like what's going on? And I was like, is this my Romy equivalent? Era? I think Maybe. so. You just got to lose three more phones and then we're yeah, tied. And then we're tied. Anyways, that's my phone drama. We're fine. Um, $500 now or never. Now or never. And I should have <laughs> realized so it never. costs more than $500 just Wait, to buy it. So imagine your phone reply and said, never. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I kind of wish. <laughs> never disconnected. Never. Um, okay. Well, a huge thing that also happened to Coachella for the Asian community, Ollie and I were at this place called Sunny Blue, which is fantastic. <gasps> I didn't have any we're having it this okay. weekend. It's in Venice. If you live in LA, it's, I've heard about it for years because Steph is from Santa Monica and she'd get it all the time when she was like in high school. Uh, it's amazing. They do like little onigiri rice balls. Oh my God. And so we're standing there, we're eating. We were like literally double fisting, like yes, munch, yes, munch, yes. munch. And then all of a sudden we hear a song from 21 which is a k-pop group they were like one of the first like iconic k-pop girl groups um cl was in it and uh-huh. then she when they disbanded she like came over to america has been doing her thing um but she that we hear a 21 song they've been disbanded for six years now and we're like eating literally double fist and being like whoa <laughs> How crazy would it be if they were performing live? But there's no way. It's been six years. Munch, munch, munch. They fucking came back. Were they on the main stage? For Coachella, yes. For 88 Rising. They literally performed Wait, I together. No idea. Oh my, Ollie and I were so mad because we were like, no. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> So we're really upset, but it was super Wait, fucking that's cool. that's so cool. Yeah, so I definitely want to see that set the next time too. Well, are they were they guests though? Because usually the same guests don't I believe out. it was C- CL was performing and I think she brought them out oh, or one of the members okay. was performing and they brought okay. um, brought them out. So super fucking iconic though. So cool. I remember when like Blackpink performed too. Yeah. It's so I, cool I to see. see them. I really wish I did. Them bringing K-pop groups over for Coachella. It's super cool. Yeah. Oh my God. But overall it was a wonderful weekend. Again, it no drama. It was a great weekend. Um, I mean, other than losing your phone, that other, was the drama. That was yeah, that was the drama. That was the drama. That was the drama. Um, I feel like there was other things I was like, I'm gonna tell the pod, and I'm kind of forgetting. Oh my god, you know who I thought looked so good all weekend? Like we should talk about the people who we actually thought like looked so good. Okay, Daisy Marquez. Uh, th- that bitch could Always. wear a paper bag and look good. Oh wait, literally a paper bag. Like I love. She had this like leather outfit that was like crisscrossing and stuff loved that look. I think she is the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. There was this one girl, um, her name was Miss Remy Ashton. She was in Vogue. <laughs> I saw Alicia Marie wear a custom parallel. That, tell them about that. Um, I did make a custom parallel apparel look. That was day one for me. I honestly really, really loved it. Um, and my favorite thing was people were like, oh my God, I love your outfit. It's so dope. But then they came close and they're like, wait, is that parallel? And I was like, yes, it is my own clothing brand. Like that was really cool. Um, and yeah, I honestly like wasn't sure about that. The night before I was like trying on all my outfits and I was like, do I wear this one day one? Do I wear this one day three? Like, what do I do? And everyone was like, day one parallel. I love it. It was so yeah. cool. And that's such a baller move. Also, I was like, this is such good. Like, what's the point of having a brand if you don't even rock it? You know what I mean? I was like, absolutely. No, you know, literally, that, exactly. That was my, my thinking behind that. But yeah, I mean, I'm very excited to go back again tomorrow for this weekend only because again, I feel like I really missed out on a lot of the music portion of it. I'm also excited to literally wear a band tee and shorts and tennis shoes. Like 
I'm excited to not dress up. I'm excited just to like go and vibe. I'm like praying that Shania Twain comes back. I don't think she will. You don't think so? He I think might. she might. She might, but I just, from past experiences, they usually bring out different guests or oh, like the guests are God. usually a one-time type thing. Like, I, I don't think Bieber Shania. will be there. I don't care about Bieber. I care about Shania Twain. I know, me too, because we missed her. But we got to see Brock Hampton. Carol G was fucking amazing. I didn't see Carol. Oh my God, she was amazing. And then she was um, singing a bunch of songs. I saw online a bunch of um, other Latina artists that were never able to perform at Coachella. Like she played Como La Flor. Oh, wait, wait, which one? Yeah, Como La Flor. <laughs> she you played were that. so confident. I was. I was like, wait, is that? Hi, Como Me Oh, she brought she out Tiesto. Tiesto. Yeah. And Becky G. I love it. Hey, Becky G. I like I just that song. always think of singing in the shower. And she looked beautiful. <laughs> it was so fun. I can't wait for this weekend. We'll come back and do another recap for you guys a yes, weekend too. And we then will. Stagecoach. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed our annual Coachella wrap up. So happy to finally wait. Does that mean we've only done one, one. Coachella wrap up from this podcast now? Ah, uh, maybe the 19. Um, yeah, but we started late 2018. So the only one we did was 2019. Yeah, so this is our first annual. <laughs> our second, second ever annual. Coachella wrap up. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, can't wait to make this an annual thing. Love you guys so much and catch you next week. Bye. Bye.